Today's video is sponsored by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and third-party patch management. And it's free for SMBs and NGOs. Visit them today at robopack.com. In today's episode, we're talking shared computer licensing. So imagine you've only got 50 computers, but you've got 100 staff. How do you work that in terms of licensing? Well, I'm going to show you this really cool way on how you not only can save money, but also save time too. Stay tuned, you're going to learn something. Hello everyone, great to see you. Um, on today's episode, I thought about shared computer licensing. And it's just one of those little topics and you think, why on earth didn't I tell you about that? Well, imagine the scenario where you're working on a shared desktop environment. It might be in a factory or a call center or a nurse's station in a hospital. And one of the issues is, you know, are we gonna have a shared account between multiple users? Potentially, that could be a security nightmare. And also, the, the whole problems with licensing computers, it can actually be quite expensive. So using this is really super simple. All the user does is simply sign in with their licensed Microsoft Office account, and it will activate on that desktop. Once they've finished, they just sign out, and again, it deactivates on the desktop. Most importantly though, it will completely remove any history that the user has had. So again, from a security perspective, it's definitely a plus plus. Now, just to mention that if you haven't subscribed, bump the subscribe button, come and join us, uh, and it would be great to have you on board. And if you'd like a little more, why not consider becoming a Patreon? Here you'll get access to full Microsoft courses, as well as monthly Zoom calls, and a heck of a lot more. Now, questions and comments, as always, get those down below. And without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in with some demos. Let's take a look. Okay, so to kick off, I'm gonna come into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And here in the Admin Center, I'm just gonna go into the More Admin Centers. So I'm gonna show all, I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna come right down to the bottom here, and you can see it says All Admin Centers. Here in the All Admin Centers, it says that we have got the Office Configuration tool here. So once opened, you can see that we have a few options. Currently, we have this new feature. This is uh, Enabling Cloud Updates for Microsoft 365. So again, this is ju you just need to click on this. Very, very simple to do, and it's then just enabled. So beyond that, we can then start to look at the customization area. Now, recently I did a session on policy management here and how you can configure uh, policies for Microsoft 365 uh, Office apps. So this includes things like all things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all the settings within that. One thing that I didn't cover though was this. This is the device configuration option. So again, I have some options here. I can either create my own configurations. There are also some standard configurations that you can choose as well. Um, and these are kind of pre-configured uh, by Microsoft for you. And we've also got modern app settings, such as Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Edge. So I'm just gonna come into my configurations. I'm gonna click on Create. And you'll notice there's a little file at the very top here, and it says configuration.xml. So I can click in here, and I can uh, give this a simple name. So once I've done with that, uh, again, I'm just going to click on that. You can see the, the configuration is now saved, and now we can go in and we can actually edit it. So one of the nice things about the configuration tool is it's a simple click, click, click type scenario. You don't need to script it. Now the good thing is, if you do need to script it afterwards, and I'll show you this in a moment, it will actually generate that XML file and you can then uh, edit it uh, at will. So you first of all choose your architecture, 32-bit or 64-bit. Of course 64-bit is the option that I'm going with. And then we can choose which version of Office are you using. So again, this may depend on your license. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose Office Apps, 
uh, for enterprise with no teams or you could choose office apps for enterprise so if i choose that um, again there are some additional uh, products there as well that you can bring in um, for the purpose of this demo though i'm going to say that's fine um, which update channel do you wish to use again i'm really just uh, going uh, with the latest i'm just leaving the settings here now interestingly enough uh, microsoft still haven't updated these pages for a few years which is a shame because people tend to ignore them but essentially if you don't want outlook uh, or you don't want publisher or uh, apps like that you can just deselect them um, we also have the background service to search in bing so if you're using an app that requires search you can switch that on now we come to the language so again one of the things that you would do is you could choose for example english united states but what if you're in a college or a university you might want to choose multiple languages which is absolutely fine so i can simply click in here and i can say hey i want to scroll down i might want to bring in danish for example or i might want to bring in uh, let's say german um, so you can choose to add in those uh, other languages if you want to so once i've clicked on next um, then obviously you've got things like the installation options so where do you want to deploy office from so by default it's bringing it down from microsoft's content delivery network alternatively of course you could share it out on a network drive in your own environment which is again easy to do you can also say hey i'm using endpoint manager here and i want you to support that do you want to show the installation to the user or do you want to keep it silent again that's an option that you can choose and again do you want to shut down any running uh, applications um, i really like the fact that you can go to the um, update and upgrade options here so again with the upgrade options do you want to uninstall previous versions and this can be quite useful in order to avoid any kind of uh, conflicts there then the key thing here is it says do you want to automatically upgrade to the selected architecture as well and then finally of course we come to licensing and activation so here you can say hey i want to automatically just accept the license and um, if you are using a product keyed version of office then of course you can add that in as well but i'm not uh, going to be bothering with that just now and this is the golden ticket here so obviously it's either shared licensing or user based user logs onto a traditional machine and this is where it would be the user's dedicated machine whereas with shared computer licensing um, again you can see you've got some options we can also allow the licensing token to roam so again if it's based on a per user that could roam over a number of machines the only issue i have with this tool is it's a, a little simplistic so let me just flip over to powerpoint and let me show you how this actually works so shared computer licensing as i said it supports scenarios where office can be used by multiple users uh, on the same internet connected de device or even a virtual machine typically with users up to 20 devices per week so it could be a call center nurses station um, you might use a virtual desktop infrastructure of course it might be a shift worker or it could just be a random access machine for example a library or a hotel or other public place and the way it works is like this when the user signs in so let's say we've got bob here bob signs in and because he's licensed he automatically activates the license on the machine when bob logs off all of his data everything any kind of history will have been wiped and then uh, angela comes along angela logs in and again she activates microsoft office and again the same thing happens again now um, she logs off all her data is deleted then finally what would happen if a non-365 user logs in well in this case 
she can still log in, but it doesn't activate Microsoft Office. In other words, it opens it up in reduced functionality mode, aka read only. So she can still use the PC, you can still write the letters, but unfortunately you won't be able to save or print anything. So just be aware of that. So Andy, you mentioned this um, uh, XML file. So this is essentially what the XML file will actually look like. So you can see it shows me the version of Microsoft Office. Again, right now, uh, the latest name is, of course, Office Apps. So that will say Office Apps. And this is the golden ticket here. These three items are the golden ticket. So property name, shared computer licensing, with a value of one. So when you click that checkbox, that's what's happening here. It's putting that property entry into the registry. The next one says SCL cash override, again, value one. That means, in other words, don't store the user's cash file, delete them. Okay, likewise, the cache override directory, rather than storing the data on the user's local machine, it's basically forwarding it to a network share here that you can use. So again, uh, you get some examples here. So in other words, no matter what the user does here, none of that data is being saved. So post deployment, this is uh, what it looks via a registry setting. So if you're using the registry, you can do this. You don't need to use this tool. You can do it manually in the registry. You can go HKey local machine. You can see, click to run, shared computer licensing of one. And also this is where you can set the storage area. So again, SCL cache override one and SCL cache override directory. Finally, if you're on premises, you can also work with this. Again, forget the 2016 version here. You can do the same thing in the registry, irrespective of which version of Microsoft Office you have. Okay, so back here in the portal, um, again, I'm going to say, yeah, I want this to be a shared computer. So I simply click on next. And again, here it says put in the organization's name to put in the property documents. So I'm going to say this is my offer, uh, Oslo HQ. You can provide a little description for the users there. Again, for the purpose of this demo, I won't bother. So here we go. You can see it's got those registry settings in. I could go into these in more detail. Um, but again, for the purpose of this demo, I won't bother. So the key thing is, it's actually, you can go in individually, you see, for each uh, of the individual products. And again, once you've finished, I can click finish. So you can easily go in, you can edit the item manually through the UI, or you can edit it, for example, in a notepad. So here you can see, I've got the file that's come in. Let's have a look at what it says. Well, first of all, uh, client edition, you can see I've chosen the 64 bit. It's coming in on the current channel and you can see 365 uh, Pro Plus retail um, and the English US. And you can see um, it's also excluding any old uh, apps there as well. And the key thing here, you can see shared computer licensing. Um, again, you can say force the shutdown uh, from those. Uh, options. Now, as I mentioned, you can also add additional options here as well. So again, there you have it, really super easy to use. So basically setup.exe space, and then uh, you can put the name of this file in Oslo configuration.xml and off it will go and install that. So there you have it, the Office Configurator and Shared Computer Licensing. Super useful. And just to mention, by the way, it will work for all SKUs of Microsoft 365. Well, certainly Business Premium, uh, as well as all your e-plans there as well. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Questions and comments, as always, down below. 
and we'll see you next time. You stay safe. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.